Greetings and blessings. Welcome to another edition of We Are the Church. This is a daily ministry of encouragement brought to you by the First United Methodist Church in Orange, California. A very good Monday to you, friends. It's October 10th. When I was a child, we called this day Columbus Day. Now, uh, many are calling it Indigenous Peoples Day. We'll get to that in a minute. But this morning, I'm going to be reading from Isaiah chapter 49. This is a portion of the servant song of Isaiah, these four different sections of scripture in the middle part of Isaiah, which refer to the one who is sent or shall be sent by God to restore uh, the nation of Israel and indeed a light to the nations. So here is what we, uh, this section of the servant song says, starting in verse three of chapter 49. And the Lord said to me, you are my servant Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I've spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward is with my God. And now the Lord says, who found, formed me in the womb to be his servant and to bring Jacob back to him and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord and my God has been become my strength. The Lord says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. A light to the nations. Many things have been done under that banner over the years that didn't quite work out so well for people. I know that uh, as a person of Northern European descent, that my ancestors have had a very long and complicated history on this continent both with the indigenous people who were already here and with others who were stolen from their homelands to become the labor and the sinew and the bones that built so much of our nation. These are hard things to talk about, but we must talk about them. We have to speak about them. Because as Isaiah points out to us, not every call of God is a call to success. Sometimes we are called to paint the picture of hope, to show the world what can be. And Isaiah was frustrated when this was written. He had been called by God to bring the exiles back and to turn the people back to the heart of God. Uh, those who had been carried off in captivity and those who were living in captivity, it's time to rally again to Yahweh and to restore ourselves. And nobody listened. Nobody listened to Isaiah. And so the Lord spoke to Isaiah and said, the problem, Isaiah, is not that the job was too big for you. It's that your thinking is too small. It's too small a thing to simply content yourself with encouraging those who are already in the room. I want you to be a light to everyone. I want the nation of Israel to be a light to everyone. I'm not sending you to make my people comfortable in and of themselves. I'm sending you to equip them to be a shining light to the nations. I read a book uh, that was put in my hands uh, last year called Unsettling Truths. And one of the authors is a man named Mark Charles. He's a pastor in the United Methodist Church. And he is um, of Native American descent and, uh, and um, uh, European descent as well. And so uh, Mark Charles pointed out a, a simple uh, truth that kind of for me has helped me really embrace the idea of celebrating this as an Indigenous Peoples Day as well. What he said was, it's literally impossible to discover a land that is already populated with people. By definition, you're not discovering anything. You're just moving into the neighborhood. But under a banner of discovery, the earliest Europeans sailed to this country and 
as far as they were, con were concerned, if there were no churches there and the people weren't speaking European languages, they were heathens, pagans, less than humans. And so, voila, we discovered this part of the world for ourselves. And you can understand what it would be like for us living here if somebody else came to this place and say, wow, we just discovered this place. And you would say, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. And then they would say, we're going to impose our entire culture on you. And you would say, no, you're not. No, you're not. So the world has shrunk to the place where it's time for all the people of God to recognize that there are many nations coming under the grace of God. Not all of them are confessing Christ. Not all of them are calling Yahweh the one true God. But they are nonetheless covered by the grace of the one who created all things. And so we are sent into the world, not to be its conquerors, but to be its servants and to embrace uh, the people with whom we come in contact and see how we might serve them in the name of the living God. It's a high and a noble calling, far bigger than just winning souls for Christ. It's a, it's a, a project of planting the shalom of God throughout the world. And it's one that I embrace and I believe in wholeheartedly. Yes, we have a long and complicated history as Northern Europeans, um, speaking for myself, with this land in which we live. But it was um, an African-American speaking with Abraham Lincoln who said, uh, when asked, why don't you just go back to Africa? He said, it's because I was born in this place. And it's impossible to be born in a place and not be in love with it. Boy, I really resonate with that. I'm a Southern California native. I am one of the indigenous people now. But I need to be aware of the history of those people who were, have an older and more ancient claim to being born in this place too. And when I am sensitive to these things, I am open to learning from God yet again. Just some thoughts to keep in mind on this Indigenous Peoples Day, this Columbus Day, and in the name of God. Let's pray. We thank you, Lord, for being with us in this place. We thank you that we are, by your grace, able to call it our home. And yet, O oh Lord, we know that our true home is with you. And so, we, uh, as our hearts are in your care and in your love, we ask you to strengthen us to be a light to all people, from every background, seeking first and foremost, not to change them, but to serve them, and through serving them, to discover the depth of your love for all peoples. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, thank you so much for stopping by today. Ran a little long today, but I appreciate the extra minutes. I want to encourage you to have a wonderful week and a wonderful Monday. And remember, as you're going about your work today, to do no harm, do all the love, all the good you can, and stay in love with God. I'll see you soon.